Hey everyone and welcome to a deep dive all about omega-3s. You know those healthy fats you always hear about. Specifically, we're going to be looking at what they do for your heart. You sent over a bunch of research and we're here to unpack it all. Yeah, that's right. And before we get into the research, we should probably make sure we're on the same page about cardiovascular disease. You mean CVD? Right, CVD. Basically, it's any disease that affects your heart and blood vessels. Like when the blood vessels that go to your heart get narrow or blocked which can cause some serious problems. Yeah, like heart attacks and heart failure. That's scary stuff. Yeah, for sure. I know that cholesterol and triglycerides have something to do with those blockages. Exactly. High cholesterol and triglycerides can build up plaque in your arteries, which makes you more likely to get CVD. And this is where omega-3s come in because they can actually have a positive impact on those things. Okay, so let's get into that. We've got this report from the Effective Healthcare Program, which is run by the government. And they analyze a ton of studies. They look specifically at the effects of omega-3s on cardiovascular disease. What's really interesting here is that they make a distinction between eating fish that are high in omega-3s and taking supplements. Apparently, they don't have the same effect. Wait, really? So like eating salmon versus taking a fish oil pill? Yeah, basically. Let's talk about eating fatty fish first. Things like salmon, trout mackerel, sardines, those are all full of these two types of omega-3s called EPA and DHA. And research shows that if you eat these kinds of fish regularly, it might actually lower your risk of developing heart problems and even dying from heart disease. So all those salmon dinners I love are good for me. That's great to hear. It's definitely promising research. But when you look at fish oil supplements, which also have EPA and DHA, things get a bit more complicated. Hold on. I thought fish oil supplements were supposed to be good for your heart. Well, they do lower triglycerides, and they raise your good HDL cholesterol a little bit, but they don't really seem to protect against heart problems, at least not for people who are already at risk for CVD or who already have it. Hmm. So maybe taking a fish oil pill isn't a magic solution for everyone. Exactly. And to make things even more confusing, fish oil supplements can slightly increase your bad LDL cholesterol, even though they're good for your triglycerides. Okay, so there are some trade-offs to think about. What about supplements with ALA? That's the plant-based omega-3, right? Like in walnuts and flaxseed. Right. But the research on ALA supplements isn't as clear. They haven't been shown to have a big impact on triglyceride levels or blood pressure or cholesterol levels. So it sounds like if you want the heart-healthy benefits of omega-3s, you're better off eating those delicious fatty fish. Based on the research, that seems to be the case. And it's important to remember that supplements aren't a cure-all. You should always talk to your doctor before taking any more. For sure. They can help you figure out what you need and whether supplements are right for you. And I guess it's worth remembering that any supplement, even ones that are supposed to be good for you, can have side effects. That's right. Like fish oil can sometimes give you fishy burps or an upset stomach. And ALA supplements can upset your stomach too. So it's not just about the benefits, but also knowing about any potential downsides. This is all super interesting, but I'm curious about how these omega-3s actually work in your body. Like, what's the science behind all these benefits? Well, that's where things get really fascinating. We'll dive into the specifics of how omega-3s support heart health when we come back. So we know that getting enough omega-3s is probably good for your heart, especially EPA and DHA. But how do they actually work? Yeah, let's get into the science of it all. What's happening at, like, the cellular level? Well, one of the key things is that they're anti-inflammatory. You know, chronic inflammation can cause a lot of health problems, including heart disease. And omega-3s seem to help reduce that inflammation, which could be why they're so good for you. So they're like little firefighters, putting out the fires of inflammation. Exactly. And that's not all. There's also evidence that omega-3s can lower blood pressure, which is another big risk factor for heart disease. So they're fighting inflammation and lowering blood pressure? What else? Well, they might also help prevent irregular heartbeats, you know, arrhythmias. And maybe even more interesting, they seem to improve the function of your endothelium. Endothelium. Now, remind me what that is again. It's the lining of your blood vessels. And a healthy endothelium is really important for good blood flow. And overall, cardiovascular health. It helps regulate blood pressure, prevents clotting, and keeps your blood vessels nice and flexible. So it's like keeping the roads clear for traffic, mm -hmm. making sure everything flows smoothly. Exactly. And omega-3s seem to help with that. Now, it's important to point out that a lot of the research we've been talking about has focused on EPA and DHA. 
the ones you mostly find in fatty fish. Yeah, those seem to be the real MVPs when it comes to heart health. They really do. ALA, the plant-based one, can be converted into EPA and DHA in your body, but the conversion rate is pretty low, so it's not as efficient. Got it. So we've talked about the benefits, but what about the risks? Are there any besides those minor side effects we mentioned earlier? Well, one thing to keep in mind is that omega-3s, especially in high doses, can thin your blood. Oh, okay. That yeah. could be a problem for some people. Yeah, definitely. If you're on blood thinners already, or if you have a bleeding disorder, it's really important to talk to your doctor before you start taking a lot of omega-3s. Good point. What about dosage? Is there like a magic number you should be aiming for? Not really. It depends on the person and their health. It's always best to talk to your doctor. They can figure out the right dose for you. Personalized advice is always the best. But are there any general guidelines? Well, the American Heart Association recommends at least two servings of fatty fish per week for most that, adults. So like two salmon dinners a week? Yeah, that's a good place to start. And if someone doesn't like fish, th there are other sources of EPA and DHA, like algae supplements, which are good for vegetarians and vegans. That's helpful to know. We've covered a lot of ground here, the science behind omega-3s, the potential benefits and risks, and why personalized advice is so important. But before we wrap up, I heard there's another side to this whole omega-3 story, something about the politics of the recommendations. Oh, yeah. Believe it or not, there's actually some debate about the official guidelines. It's not always as straightforward as it seems. That sounds interesting. <laughs> Get ready, listeners, because we're about to dive into the murky waters of nutrition recommendations. We'll be right back to explore that in part three. All right, we're back, and we're talking about the politics of omega-3 recommendations. I never thought something like that could be controversial. Yeah, it's surprising how often these nutrition guidelines get debated. Like we were talking about how the American Heart Association recommends two servings of fatty fish per week, but some experts think that might not be enough, especially for people with certain health conditions or people who just don't get enough omega-3s from their diet. So are they saying we should all be eating more fish? Not exactly. Remember, high doses of omega-3s can thin your blood, which could be dangerous for some people. And there's also the issue of sustainability. And some fish can have mercury in them. It's not as easy as just saying eat more fish. Yeah, there's definitely more to consider. So if those guidelines aren't perfect, what should people do? How can they make sure they're getting enough omega-3s? It all comes back to personalized advice. Talk to your doctor. Maybe get your blood levels checked. And have a conversation about your specific needs and any risks based on your health history. It sounds like there's no one-size-fits-all answer. Exactly. Everyone's different. What works for one person might not work for another. That's why it's so important to talk to your doctor. Okay, so we've learned a lot about omega-3s today, especially EPA and DHA, which are found in fatty fish. They seem to be really important for heart health. They do, but there are a lot of things to think about. Right, it's not as simple as just taking a supplement. Definitely not. You have to understand the science, know the potential benefits and risks, and work with your doctor to make the right decisions for you. This has been a really eye-opening deep dive. I feel like I have a much better understanding of omega-3s now, and I hope our listeners do too. But remember, this is just the beginning. Keep learning about omega-3s and heart health. Ask questions, do your research, and always think critically. Great advice. And remember, taking care of your heart is a lifelong journey. Small changes can make a big difference. That's so true. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time, stay curious.